Hello to all Daffy users. In this video, we're going to demo the Daffy process for a full air-gapped OpenShift install for vSphere. Here's a big picture overview for what our environment looks like. We've got a private network whose firewall has an open port 22. We've also got a bastion machine with direct access to this restricted network where our cluster will run, as well as a local query repository. Within the air gap network, Daffy is going to pull images from this repository to deploy OpenShift. We're going to use port 22 to access the restricted network using an SSH connection from a jump box, which is just a machine that has direct access to the internet. First, we're going to mirror a public registry on our jump box machine to later move to our air gapped bastion host. Let's take a look at what my environment file looks like. These are the values specifically required for an air gap install. We tell Daffy to enable air gap and then supply the DNS name and IP address for the jump box, as well as the DNS name and IP address for the restricted network bastion box. If you don't have a DNS name for either, you can just put the IP address instead. Now we can begin our installation. First, run the OCP registry build command from the jump box. I'm going to double check that we're in OCP registry, and then I'll run the command. Once the build process begins, Daffy will start showing output logs. You'll notice Daffy run a series of pre-checks, making sure that your environment file is correct and validating its parameters. You'll then see Daffy mirror OpenShift images from a public registry onto the local registry within your jump box. It can take a couple minutes for Daffy to install all the required images, so I'm going to speed up the clock for this step. Once the images are mirrored, Daffy then packages our files using tar so that we can export them to our Bastion machine. After the build command runs, Daffy will display all the files you created that you will now need to move to your Bastion box within the restricted network. You can do this via portable USB disk, through the firewall, or even with dual networking cards. For the purposes of our example, we're going to be connecting through the firewall with SSH and then move the files with SCP. Once all the files have been moved from the jump box and into the bastion within the restricted network, we can look at the Daffy import air gap directory and you'll notice all of our exported OpenShift images along with the air gap prep script. Run this script and Daffy will untar all files, install all command line tools, and also install Daffy locally. Now that we've finally untarred all of the OpenShift images on our Bastion box, we can run the OCP registry build command in order to start building our local mirror. This is the Quay repository that our OpenShift installation will use within the private network. If we look at the output logs, we can see Daffy doing some pre-checks and then preparing the host before creating our local registry. This step can take a couple minutes as Daffy loads the images into our local registry. Once Daffy is done creating the local image repository, the output logs will give you a URL to a Quay console, along with a username and password to log in with. Here you can see all of the images that we've exported to our Bastion machine. Once we've created our local image registry on the Bastion machine within our private network, Daffy finally has the resources to pull in order to build our cluster. Since we're installing Daffy on vSphere, there are a couple vSphere specific parameters that you must set within your environment file. For a more specific explanation of what these provider environment variables are, please go to the vSphere page 
under deploying OCP on the Daffy documentation. Also take note of the vSphere folder. This is the location where Daffy will store new virtual machines. Now that we've confirmed that our environment for vSphere is correct, we can finally begin building the OpenShift cluster itself. Simply run the OCP build command and the cluster will begin installing. Before I run the command, I'm going to double check that I'm in the OCP build command and not the registry build. Once Daffy begins to build the OpenShift cluster, you'll notice that the output logs are very similar to the other deployments on other platforms. Daffy begins its pre-checks, prepares the hosts, installs the appropriate tools, and begins to run the OpenShift install process. The output logs are an excellent source of information on what is happening during each step of the build process. If there's ever a failure, you'll see the word failure highlighted in red, along with a description of what went wrong. The Daffy team also maintains the Daffy user group channel within the IBM Technology Sales Slack workspace. It's a pretty good resource to get answers to any roadblocks you have. Although in our experience, it's always a good idea to double check your environment files. We've found that most problems begin here. Once Daffy gets to the vSphere steps, you can use the vSphere client to see your virtual machine being created along with its resources. If you open the vSphere console while Daffy creates the cluster, you can actually see worker nodes being initialized. Once Daffy is finished with the OpenShift build process, the output logs will give you some general details about the cluster itself, and then some login information for the OpenShift web console. It'll give you a username, password, and then the URL itself. Let's use this information to log into the web console and validate if our cluster has successfully installed. I'm going to paste that URL into Firefox. And then I'm going to wait for the console to load. I'll log in with cube admin. And once I log in, you'll be able to see the OpenShift web console. Going through the overview, I can see that everything checks out. We've got nine nodes. We've got green check marks for our status. We've got version 4.8.42 and vSphere as a provider. Since we set the flag to enable OpenShift container storage in our environment file, we can also double check that storage is running. If I open the overview, we'll see that the status is green and that we have nearly 600 gigabytes of available space. I can also open the operators and see which ones are installed and which ones are available in the hub. We hope this demonstration has left you with a better understanding of how you can use Daffy to install OpenShift in an air-gapped environment, along with a better understanding of how Daffy can greatly simplify the installation process to just a few environment parameters.